Hello, good evening to everyone. Uh, this time we are going to show our assignment for the Levi's Strauss case study, a symbol of quality. The member of this group is me, Bob Kanyete, and then we have Fameda Chaudhuri, MD Abdullah Al Mahmoud, Kathleen Togano, Cara Fleming, and uh, Soma Actor. As per recording, this is September 22nd, 2023, and we will discuss um, about Levi's. And based on this one, Levi's, based on history, Levi's Strauss, the person who created the company, uh, his origin actually came from Germany, uh, from German Confederation, Kingdom of Bavaria. He was born on February 26, 1829, and his nationality is uh, German-American. Um, along with his life, he started uh, at German Confederation by the year 1829, and then before he left the United States in 1853 for 24 years, he stayed uh, in German Confederation, basically uh, Germany right now, and then he stayed in the United States for 49 years. In addition to that, as of today, as of uh, for this recording, Levi Strauss Company has 150 years, 3 months, and 16 days um, life that they already have spent uh, uh, upon creating this company. Now, the evolution of the Levi Strauss logo, uh, basically in, uh, in the 18, uh, 1853, it started with a simple line of Levi Strauss and company, and then they made uh, this logo that is even right now in the back of the tags of the Levi's jeans, the original riveted quality clothing. And we will we will discuss why um, these this, um, jeans were, were created. So one of the history of uh, just a little snapshot of uh, Levi Strauss company, Levi's was, uh, Levi Strauss, when he came in the United States, he has a dry goods company. And during that time in the 1800s, uh, there, the United States gold rush is prominent. And because of that, they he, he thought that, oh, people are working really hard. They need a clothing or set of clothes that will satisfy the hardworking people that time. So he created the riveted jeans and therefore the blue jeans were created. Now let's go to... Um, the next uh, part of the, the before before I will give the time to uh, Famida, um, Levi Strauss, the key people as of today in 2023, we have uh, the chairman of the board, John Anderson. Uh, also, he's the president and CEO, as well as Robert or Bob Eckert uh, in the on that company. They have over 470 companies operate, uh, operated stores and their service is worldwide. Basically, uh, the industry that they, they are in is in clothing. And for 2023, as of May, they already have $4.3 billion in uh, total revenue. So they have big, big money. So I will now give the time to Famida to discuss about um, the competitors that will try to steal the money of <laughs> Levi Strauss. Now I'll give the time to Famida. Famida, time is yours. Hi, this is Fahmida, and today my topic is the major competitors of blue jeans. As my team member, uh, Bob, he said, in today's time, casual wear is best way to dress up for most of the people instead of dressing up like formally or well personal as well as professional work. Uh, the blue jeans market has no boundaries as well as all nations happily accept jeans as their day-to-day -day wear. Similarly, there is no age limit for these as individual or small uh, kids for an individual as old as an elderly person will prefer jeans in their day-to-day -day life. So there are many competitors in blue jeans markets. For instance, the popular brands of blue jeans include Diesel, Levi Strauss, Levi Eagle, Signature, and other brands. Among all these brands of blue jeans, Levi Strauss and company is considered as one of the largest brands name in the world's apparel market that has sales in more than 
110 count countries. The company has specific, uh, specifically targeted those customers who fall in the category of upper middle class and upper class. However, the company tends to focus more than people falling in the age group of like 13 to 24 years, which are mostly uh, youngest, but the company has also in its product range of those individuals who are above 30, 30 years of age. So major competitors of blue jeans market, according to the 2015 research data from US market, uh, they are like Gap, Levi's, Old Navy, American Eagle, uh, Asian M, etc. So among them, Levi's, uh, it's a damn cool brand, super fitting and wrangle. It's very stylish look. And if I talk about diesel, it's best fitting and no comparison miles ahead from competitors. And Kelvin Kellin, no other jeans got the quality and comfort better than CK, I think. Simply best, uh, simply it's the best in business. And the last one, it will be Lee jeans. It's a very best fit for uh, like healthy guys or chubby guys. Probably it was first reach to latest for men as well as women. The brand has been known as one of the top jeans products all over the world. So that's all from me. Uh, thank you so much. And after me, the next speaker will be Kara. Thank you. Thank you. So I, high class, high professor, I will be covering market segmentation specifically in relation to the jeans marketplace. And so market segmentation is basically areas of data that you can gather useful information from. So the major types of market segmentation include geographic, demographic, psychograph psychographic, and behavioral segmentations. And so in the gene industry, we often see demographic and behavioral segmentation. So in behavioral segmentation, marketers divide buyers into groups based on their knowledge of their attitude, their behaviors and responses to a certain product or service. And then demographic variables is more typical that you think of with data such as age, um, gender, income, education, race, etc. And so we can see just um, with how the gene industry, their products are arranged, we can utilize data from the demographic and behavioral segments. So for example, in terms of age, the gene industry is dividing its products into males, females, and children divisions. In terms of gender, it's for males or females. And then another real life example is that genes take into account their target demographics income, especially. So brands such as Diesel, which was mentioned before, or G-Star, they are higher end brands. Usually jeans are starting in the hundreds. So they are gonna target individuals with higher incomes and a strong behavioral desire to maintain probably a social status or they're really into fashion. And so that's kind of a basis of um, market segmentation in the gene industry. So I'll turn the time over to my next classmate. So hello, this is Shuma. Hello, Professor. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm presenting the market share of Levi's. Uh, so from my previous discussion, uh, all are known that it's also the like a well-known brand in the denim industry. And we are seeing in the screen that uh, from 2012 to 2022, uh, the a share um, and the annual gross profit of Levis is like uh, is in a static and stable way and the growth uh, is like uh, they are flourishing uh, flourishing in uh, in continuously and um, in 2012 the gross annual income was about 2199000 uh, usd dollar and in 2022 uh, their their gross annual profit is uh, 3549 which is quite uh, um, good in profit mar market uh, according to um, comparing to the um, uh, competitors 
because uh, in uh, back in two, uh, 2099 to uh, 2020 and 21 because of the covid uh, all the de uh, denim uh, markets uh, impacted uh, thoroughly uh, worldwide because uh, of uh, the like the pandemic and the lockdown process demographically uh, so but levies uh, still levies uh, uh, earned 6.717 billion sales and um, uh, they contributed in 87% uh, percent, uh, total in the denim market uh, comparing to the others like Lee and CK. Uh, so still levies is uh, right now also the leading share market in the denim industry. Uh, so that's all. Uh, now I would like to call my next presenter, um, Bob. Uh, he will discuss the missed opportunities. Bob, please come and describe your part. Thank you. Thank you, Suma. Um, right now, um, we will be talking about the missed opportunities of uh, Levi's. Um, on this report, I just made it into three big categories. First is that um, Levi's, they missed to safeguard their trademarks. So that's a because of those um, missed um, sa uh, safeguarding of the trademarks, they were on a multiple legal battles, um, suing different competitors because of the design, the and the the art, and some most of those are trademarks related. Second is that. Because they are one, if they are not the leading, they are one of the um, the big companies in the genes, they are also the ones that being imitated or a lot of replicas are being created because they miss to, um, to safeguard this kind of um, designs because uh, they are just being hanged. Someone goes to their shop and then they see the design, they will see or buy something out from it, take a prototype and build something very close to that one. So imitation is uh, very, very rampant for Levi's. The, sec uh, the last one is that product suppliers also supply imitators. That's one of the big problem, Even, not only in Levi's, but um, a lot of companies have uh, in trouble with this because even though they, are, they have certain sets of uh, product suppliers, However, these suppliers also supply uh, their imitators. So those are three big um, missed opportunities for uh, this big company too. So um, before we will end, we will give the time to MD for the current uh, shifts. MD, I'll give you the time. Okay, thank you, Bob, for giving me this opportunity to discuss in my part about the current shifts of e-commerce dominance. Now, as we see the uh, current shifts about e-commerce dominance, we can find something about Levi's that they are expanding their market, like e-commerce may have continued to expand into new regions and markets with local players and gaining prominence in various countries. And we see about their market place and diversification. And they also make a platform may have diversified their offerings, moving beyond just retail to include service like streaming, cloud computing, and also more. And uh, they have also some uh, extension like sustainability and digital practices. They also follow AI and personalization. It enhances use of artificial intelligence for personalization, product recommendation, and improving the overall shopping experience. And if we see the sustainability focus uh, that has become prominent focus across various industries, including e-commerce. And I will uh, discussing about something about their uh, sustainability, like print packaging. Many e-commerce companies are adopting eco-friendly packaging material to reduce waste and minimize their environmental footprint. And Levi's always uh, maintained this, uh, that uh, this includes using recycled materials and designing packaging that is easy to recycle. We already know that. And energy efficient warehouse. And e-commerce fulfillment centers 
are increasingly powered by renewable energy sources and designed to be more energy efficient. This reduces the overall compound footprint of the supply chain. And lastly, the customization and personalization are key strategies in the e-commerce industry to enhance the customer experience and prices. Here are some of the how they are being used. Product recommendation is the number one, and the personalized email, user profile, and customized product. Some e-commerce business offers customized, customizable products such as apparel. Where customers can choose colors, sizes, and add personalization like monograms. And personalized content beyond product recommendation, uh, Levi's uh, also uh, they make a platform uh, that uh, the articles and guides to match a user interest and preferences. And uh, they have some dynamic pricing like uh, platform adjust pricing based on factors like users' location, browsing history and demand for a particular product. And if I uh, have some, I have some conclusion about Levi's, uh, the, the, the latest September 2021, Levi's iconic American uh, denim brand was actively engaged with e-commerce and digital strategies. However, I don't have access to real-time information and the specific, uh, the, their e-commerce sports may have involved since then. Here are some general observations and conclusions based on their historical approach. Uh, the e commerce growth. Levi's recognized the significance of e commerce as a sales channel and has likely been investing by enhancing its online presence. This includes uh, offering a wide range of uh, products for online shoppers. And sustainability. Uh, Levi's has been committed to sustainability, so it is possible that they integrated sustainability messaging into their commerce platform, highlighting eco-friendly products and practices, and they have some mobile optimization. Given the prevalence of mobile shopping, Levi's probably ensured uh, their e-commerce site and app were mobile-friendly, allowing customers to shop conveniently from their smartphones. And customer engagement, Levi's may have leveraged digital marketing and social media to engage with customers, promote new collections, and provide stylish style inspiration. To get the most of the up-to-date basic information about Levi's e-commerce report, I recommend visiting their official website or checking recent news articles and reports. E-commerce strategies can evolve rapidly and Levi's may have implemented new initiatives or technologies to enhance the online shopping experience for its customers. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, MD. Thank you very much for that detailed report. Now, uh, before we will end our, um, our presentation today, we will just have a, an open discussion on um, I have a question right here um, for Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen, can you tell us a little bit of uh, the report that you had on what is it that demographics is uh, important in, uh, in the Levi's company? Please explain. Um, a little background on the demographic. I think the category I'll be covering in terms of the demographics is the age group. So different age groups, like we have the baby boomers, we have the Generation X, the Generation Y, and the Generation Z. Um, you can notice in the designs that Levi's has, you can notice that there are loose jeans, there are fitted jeans, like both for the men and the women. And usually the baby boomers, they started the jeans with the, with the loose style. They call it now mom jeans. And it's like the bell-bottom jeans. And for... The baby boomers, like there, that was their fashion trend during their time. And when I talk about baby boomers, um, they're born between 1944 to 1964, and then we'll skip to the millennials or the Generation Y, which is born between the 1980 to 1994, and then the Generation Z is 1995 to 2015. So it's interesting how fashion trend, how the demographics affected the fashion trend, spe specifically with the jeans market. 
the baby boomers started the genes as the loose ones. And then with the generation Y or the millennial, um, they were fond of the fitted ones or the skinny genes, as we call it. Like here in the photo, it's the regular fitted men's. And now with the generation Z, um, they're going back to the old ones, which is the ones that the baby boomers are using, the loose genes. So it's a battle between, but it's interesting how the demographics are just usually back and forth with the fashion. So what they think is new is not actually new. And I think it's also because of social media now that these things are coming up. So I think that is how it affects the demographics in some ways. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our time is about to end. So we will just have a short conclusion that uh, Levi's, um, Levi's is no question a symbol of quality because as uh, the history itself for the company, the clothes, uh, this is according to the, the company itself, the clothes built to withstand the working conditions of the workers during the gold rush. And even until now, we can still see and experience the quality of Levi's. Thank you, everyone. And may the Lord bless you and have a good night. Thank you for presenting our case study. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.